Hi everyone! How's everyone doing? Um... Just updating the Twitch info. Alright, <clears throat> there we go. Welcome to our uh, painting show. Relaxing painting. Um, we are working on a few things today. Your camera is way off. It was all tilted. It was oh. weird. Alright, um... Now it's tilted again. Alright. Hey everyone, welcome. Good start. Um, uh, <laughs> today we're doing more painting projects. Um, I am going to be finishing up these big orbs that my wife Lexi was working on. You're going to be Working a bit on the necromancer crypt mm -hmm. that I had started, uh, made out of dungeon tiles, like so. They're all magnetic. Everything we do, um, all of the pieces that we have are 3D printed here on those printers behind me. And they, uh, the designs can be found on our website, DysonDungeons.com, under the Attributions tab. Um, so... If you're interested, we have more of these all uploaded on YouTube, if you're enjoying this. Um, and I guess, I think I should just probably get started, huh? Yeah, I will too. So, what Lexi described to me as what she wants for these tops on these orbs is sort of a luster copper brown color. Um... So, I'm gonna see if I can mix up something like that for her. Um, for the brown, I'm gonna use this sort of flat earth as a base. It's light and needs a shake quite badly. Mm hmm. Do you need to stir it from the bottom? Uh, no, it's probably okay. <laughs> Is there still enough in there? It's about half full. Okay. And what you want me to do, I'm gonna need that scarlet red. There you go. Is little stuff. I have to finish the insides of these door frames. Well, do you want the door frames to be red, though? Should they be metal? Should they be wood? No, I don't know. These... Okay, so <clears throat> here's the question. Here's the frame on the inside and the outside, which has been painted on the outside red, so I thought... I had just been you know. going quick. Okay. Um, so, yeah. What do you, how do you want the frame done? Why don't we do it in wood? Something a little different. Dark, okay. dark gray. Dark, dark brown. Dark brown, the darkest brown of the dark browns? Yeah. So that would be the, um... I'm gonna need a fair amount, brown. so I'm gonna get a bit and a cup for my base. I'll look at the color chart here. Um... I'm gonna be adding some copper to get that copper tone, and I'll probably add a tiny bit of silver to up the luster of it. So do you want the frames of the doors? Um, how do you want these doors done? They can be wood frames as well. The doors. The wood hole? with metal, maybe? Wood Co on the inside. Wood with, with and then metal some on the outside. copper on the outside. Okay. So I'm gonna paint the panels. The same dark brown as the frame. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to paint the uh, crosshatch pieces of uh, metal. What I'm going to start with, though, before that, is this center piece. Um, we're going to be filling this with uh, li a liquid kind of thing, realistic water. So the seams need to be sealed in the crosses and around the edges. And I'm using this uh, little bit of plastic putty, which is basically a water-based rosin with <laughs> powdered marble, I guess, is the white stuff. Is it? Yeah, that's what it said. Didn't realize that, that's kind of weird. So I'm going to take this apart. Here's the flip. There you go. Take this out. And uh, I'll show you what I'm doing. It's not very 
difficult. I just try to keep this uh, pretty much on the scene. Okay. So I have a sort of soul shimmery brown here. Get my glove on. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is to find the edge between the pillar and the sphere itself. So I'm going to move myself in a little here while I work. And I'm using this like small to medium sized brush here. I'm going to just carefully go along the edge and go all the way around in order to create my sort of barrier between where the pillar is and where the sphere is. Let's see, sort of like that. It's kind of raised up, so I'll just fill this in. The uh, realistic water will level over the tops of these. Yep. But basically, we want it to not leak out. So this will get all painted over and made to look uh, beautiful again. And That's the goal. This is going to be a blood pool. Yeah. So I'll paint it um, with the flat red. Okay. And you're going to want highlights in the bricks too, aren't you? Yes, we will. So that'll be the same color. So when I get that color out, well, this, well. this might actually have set up. And the the same these color. are our prototype models. Our new model does not have this... Uh, Issue mm -hmm. built into it, which nope. is nice. Doesn't have a seam. So I'm going to cap this up, and then I'm just going to use a toothpick to kind of make sure that this isn't uh, that this is into the the crack and that is fairly flat. And since this is all getting painted over, smearing it around a little bit. Yes. Getting all the way around these orbs. And these, I am led to believe, are going to be in a big fight that's going to be taking place fairly soon within our show. We do a D&D &D show using a lot of the miniatures that you see painted here on uh, here on Twitch at Dyson Dun in in Dungeons with an N. So I need to do that the sort of underside defining on the other two. Um, we do that Sundays 2 p.m. Eastern is when those are aired. It's a brown metallic -y, copper -y kind of color. Yeah, I thought it was kind of pretty. Yeah, I'm getting a paper towel here. Yeah, you're fine. I made quite a bit because I knew I had to cover the entirety of the orbs, and I did not want to try and match the color again. Yeah. Um, I'd rather waste a little paint than have to repaint it because I can't get the color to match. Um, so I made extra paint. Okay, so what we're doing here is uh, painting the door frame wood, dark brown. Unlike uh, most older people, I can see close up, but I can't see a distance. So.
those come off. So I'm trying to see close up. You can also probably have to talk louder. Think so? Yeah, probably. Am I too, being too quiet? Sometimes you talk down in your throat a little, and then mm -hmm. I think it gets hard for the microphone, so I can't hear you. You're mumbling about your eyesight. Yep. I was. <laughs> um, this is going along pretty well here. I think these will make nice sort of coppery orbs. Okay, there's a second one with the bottom sort of defined. So now I will use do the third one. After I get that, I'm going to um, do the bottom rim here as well, I think, is what she wanted. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it'll look nice. Uh, nice that way. And then I will uh, do the bulk of the orb with a larger brush. I think the design for these was originally actually a palantir, like in Lord of the Rings, was the intention on a pedestal. Huh. But we're really going a different direction and we rescale them and things like that. No, it's not a palantir, it's uh, something else. It's sort of, I don't know, it almost feels like a Tesla coil sort of thing. To, you know, those like. Well, oh, then the graph generator. Yeah, one of those. That's almost what it feels like to me. Hmm. Just from appearance. With all the copper. Yeah, yeah. Good thing we don't have electricity in this world. Uh, I think, I think lightning spells are a thing. Oh, oh that's true. <clears throat> do we know it's electricity or do we just think it's... No, I'm just guessing from the uh, appearance, you know. It feels, I mean, it feels like one of those generator thingies. That's my entire quite, basis. What, the, what it looks like. All right. Yeah, now I'm going to go back to my first one, which will have dried a bit. And I'm going to go around the rim here. Trying to get a gauge on, sort of. I feel like this will visually tie it a little together. I just think it's kind of neat when we get to paint something that people get to see in show later. Yeah. It was pretty good. Yeah, you know, we've done that, you know. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. We have tents and cards and dungeon tiles. You know, and dungeon tiles. I don't know, it always feels cool to me. Now I put in that sort of bottom rim to help finish that off a little. Yeah, that's looking more finished. I love whenever you get to put on, like, cover up the primed areas like these, it suddenly starts to look a lot more like a finished 
thing. And I don't really understand fully why that is, like, mentally, because, you know, it's, it, it has, it, it's black, it should be, like, you know, it should read as painted, but for some reason, it really changes the visual dynamic mm -hmm. when, when it's all on. Yeah, and you'll be seeing, you know, and you've seen this before, something similar is when, when I do these doors a little bit later, and just sort of slush paint all over the place on the panel. They look like looks, a giant mess. It looks like a giant mess, but then you paint in the uh, metallic cross bracing and boom, changes it tremendously. Yeah. I don't know, I always kind of like, it's like a video game hidden area. Who wants us to paint an emergency button that will drop supplies and buffs in, in the middle of the fight? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Healing you potion. You need, need those to just sort of pop up. And I don't suppose we'll be that lucky. Yeah. Just to have just things pop up. There we go. One more, and then I'm going to clean this brush and tackle the uh, orb itself. And then once that is uh, tackled, it will be a matter of cleaning up, you know, getting everything looking mm -hmm. the way it's intended. So there's your door frame, is that yeah, what you expected? Yeah, that's okay. good. <clears throat> then I'm going to paint the lintel that goes across the top of the frame. Mm -hmm. Just like that. <clears throat> Put it under the camera. I've got it on a toothpick, which is my clever way of holding it so I can paint all sides of it at once. <laughs> and I have to wait for bits to dry. a little bigger brush on this. I think I will. It'll go a lot faster. Alright, so I have all the bottoms painted on now. It does look a lot more finished with the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. That makes a big difference. So, now I'm gonna take... Well, first I'm gonna get my brush clean. Because I'm swapping brushes here. And then I'm gonna take... Not my... Super big brush, but I'm gonna take this sort of medium size one and get the orb itself painted. This toothpick is just uh, put in the hole. Where the hinge pin goes in so later. It's just held on by gravity. Mm -hmm, a little bit of friction. So I didn't make a hole for toothpick, it's already there, and that's the, the hole, like I said, that holds the hinge pin. Which allows the door to swing open and close. That's another nice thing about these tiles uh, is that they have actually working parts, moving doors. Mm -hmm. I heard that there's uh, like a trap door kind of thing coming, maybe? Uh, yeah, trap door, secret doors are being uh, tested right now. Hopefully we'll have those coming. Because who doesn't love a secret door slash, like, trap in a dungeon crawl? Okay. 
there's a side by side of a uh, one without an orb and one with the orb. Yeah, that's a good color. I hope that's what Lexi's looking for. It'll mat down a little as it dries from where it's glossy right now, but um, probably if she wants it really glossy, guys, spray a little lacquer on it. Right? Yep, we have glossy lacquer. Just tape off. So how we would do that would be, if we do, is tape off the pillar here um, so that you don't spray the pillar. And then once you get it adequately taped off, you just uh, use in a well-ventilated area, probably outside, um, in our case, you so, would spray it down with this lacquer. I'm going to put this on an alligator clip. Uh-huh. I'm going to rotate your camera so it's upright. That's just something you have to do when you shift the camera. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have a forest of alligator clips here. There's a little piece of wood with some holes in it so I can just stick it on. Stick it in there. Sit down. An alligator forest. And I think I might be able to get away with that here too. Let's see. That way I could do both sides at the same time. I can get a toothpick into the little pinch hole on the door. It's a lot smaller. No. <clears throat> but. I can. Do an alligator clip. The raised part is going to be metal. So I can clip it. There. And hold it. And I'll be painting these inside panels. And I'm using the big brush. Because I don't care if the uh, panels, if the base part gets painted, it's just, just going to get painted. And then, last orb, last but not least, one more orb to do here. What I want to make sure is that the inside of the panel is painted because the... Uh, Talk louder. The inside of the panels need to be painted uh -huh. pretty thoroughly. Uh, because otherwise we'll have gaps between the panels and the uh, raised part when that's painted. You know, it would look unsightly and require lots of touch-up. Mm -hmm. so, actually, I think I'm just going to paint all over everything like this. Yeah. Yeah, you, with those panels, if you're putting wood on the interior of those bars, it's almost, e it's a lot quicker and easier to just cover it in the brown of the wood and then, and then paint, the, uh, paint the metal the once metal it's dried. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I got my orbs painted in here. Not too bad. Oh, that went quickly. Yeah. And you had enough paint. I have enough paint. I feel like I'm shouting. But, you know, you're not. We have a, you can talk as loud as you want. We actually have a limiter on. So it automatically reduces the sound of your voice, mm. but we don't have much in the way of amping up your voice. So, I still have some of this paint left, less than I was expecting. Um, what I'm going to do is use that for touch up and maybe a second coat in a couple spots later on. Um, there's like this area here. I could use a little touch up, I feel like, late, um, as it after it dries. Um, so the thing I need to do next is start touching up the uh, bars here. Um, then I'm gonna actually start with the ivory. That is sand. Where is my ivory? Oh, it was hidden. Thank you. So I do not need all that much paint for this touch-up. Um, 
I'm going to be using very, very small amounts. So. Just see if I can get, like, one drop. There we go. And then I'm going to use my smallest brush here. And just get the teeniest, tiniest amount on. Um, what I'm going to want to do is go around, get anywhere that needs to be this ivory color, paint it in as ivory, like so. And then I'll have to touch up around the edge here, but that is a lot easier. There's a couple spots here and there. I just need a tiny bit. Yeah, the, the touch up is amazing too. I mean, something can look all kind of raggedy, and it turns out that there's just a little spot. You know, a little wedge of paint or something, mm -hmm. and you take a drop of paint and paint it over, and boom, it looks great again. Yeah, it can be pretty impressive how much that alters it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I need to go through each channel and touch up. Any spot where the copper is sort of bleeding in to the middle of the channel. And this isn't going to be 100% perfect, but this is for our show. It's not going to be a for sale piece. It's um, something that's going to just appear on camera, generally speaking. So, as long as it's most of the way there. Okay, so we got our door frame, our top, angel, and the door panels painted. So that's just going to get set aside for a bit. And I'm going to go back to uh, the crypt here. After the clean the brush. I'll be using a flat red paint and doing two things. One, and maybe I'll just start with that, is to paint the inside of the blood pool uh, with the flat red, which will be the base color for the, for the liquid that liquid. gets put on top. <clears throat> and that will be the realistic water, which is a clear liquid. It's a resin. And that will be colored with swirls of darker bloody bloodiness. Blood swirls. And scabs. And probably some scabbing. Spots, whatever. If you've been watching us for a while, you saw that we did one earlier in green. Green is kind of yellowish greens and dark greens is a slime pit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one is going to be a blood pool. So after I'm done with this, I'll clean off my big brush, pull out a smaller brush, and then this whole thing here 
what will be happening is that the uh, I'll be painting random blocks with that same sort of red color uh, just to give us some variation before we wash it. This one's going to be washed. Black washed. Uh, yes, black washed. You sure you want variations in this one? Um, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it might be okay without them. I think variations are nice. Okay. Well, I don't mind doing it if it doesn't look good. Then, as we all know and we've heard before, paint it over. My little drop of white is starting to dry. Oh, what's left of it? Get a new one. Going around and getting all of these tiny little specks of copper cleaned up. Alright. I feel like that's coming along pretty nice. What I want to do now is clean up uh, the orb copper color. So, all oh, what I have left here, over. I know around the edge here, there's going to be a need to be a little work. Some areas where the paint's a little thinner, but I want it a little darker. A little more saturated. Now that it's had a chance to dry in a couple spots where maybe a little bit of the ivory went over. And then I want to take a look at my upper orb here. And look for the same sort of spots that are a little thinner than I want. Just bump those up a little. Okay, so red doesn't cover as well as some of the browns. Have the same issue with the yellow. So I'm gonna let that dry, and then we'll decide whether we need a second coat or not. Okay. Let's see how it looks. Need to do some scarlet red touch ups around here. Yep. Where the ceiling was put in. But what I'm going to do now, again, putting it aside, okay. is uh, get a smaller brush and start doing selected uh, highlights. I guess you call them, or. Just here, variation Just variations. Bricks. Variations in the bricks. Yeah. I'm not going to do a whole lot of them, but just some, some random ones to uh, so it doesn't look quite so monotonously red. Mm -hmm. We found that that turn almost always looks good when we do it. Yeah. 
It has a very nice subtle effect when you add in random bricks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does look good. Alright, there we go. This pillar's looking alright. I'll need to do a little copper touch up as my, like, hopefully last step of the base of the copper. That's running up the length. Now let's see. I'll just start at the far end and work my way back. Yeah, there's some that had gray on them. So now they're going to turn red. Yeah, there was a couple splotches here and there. Mm -hmm. That's a good way for uh, less cleanup. Yeah, but I see that for your random. <laughs> when I when I pull out the uh, scarlet red leader for the pond, for the blood pool, there'll be some there little touch-ups where that has to go over the gray, and then there's some. Okay. Probably spots that need to be grayed out where they got redded. Three orbs so far. Yeah. Looking all right. Put the camera on where I'm painting, huh? Uh-huh. Just to do it. All right. So. Now, I mostly want to clean up the copper here. But I think these orbs are looking nice. I think that would, these would pass muster for the show. So. They do look pretty good. So is that just copper on the verticals? Yeah. Get a little splash of the copper. Let's see. What's my most dry? So I don't mess with my hands too much. This one seems pretty dry. So as you can see here, as the paint dries, the contrast is less, so they don't jump out really as much. When we first did this, it was like, oh, that's going to be terrible. When the paint dried and the contrast went down and after they were washed, it actually ended up looking pretty nice. Pretty nice. I find a lot of the copper touch-up needs to happen where it like joins the upper orb because that wasn't the most, it's not the most well-defined area in the model, so you have to sort of create that definition artificially. Dang it. That's a spot to fix right there. When your hand slips, sometimes that happens.
I'm just pulling them off of the model one at a time, then putting them back when I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I see what you're doing. Slowly work your way around the mm -hmm. model. Yeah. Well, if we get close mm -hmm. to washing, when I'm, I can do the wash on it. When I am done with these orbs. Yeah, it might be uh, ready. One more copper on the bottom here. coming along. I'm gonna get those while they're drying. I'm going to get the white back out again. It's sort of a tug back and forth of all that occurs in the fixing stage where you're like slowly edging on that line. If you're lucky you can get it right away. Sometimes there's some spots that need a little more back and forth. Quickly looking, there it is. That's the one I, I got my little messed up spot on. Go in with the ivory and cover that. Now oh, it's gone. Color you want to call it, but it's a different color. It's a good sign. Mm -hmm. A different color block. Or this all takes an increase in interest in the appearance of. I can't even understand what you're saying. <laughs> what is it? A very interest in something? In increasing the interesting look of the box. Uh, oh, okay. Increasing the interesting look of the box you're painting. It's yeah. a good lyric, classic lyric. Yeah, yeah, there's no rhymes in there. It's just free verse. It's very Dada. It's not Dada at all. But, you know. All right. 
I think I'm approaching calling these good. I'm going to do one last go around with the luster brown, my coppery brown. Hmm. Just get any last spots that feel like they could use it. So should we be carrying on like a, an unrelated, potentially interesting dialogue while we're doing this so that if anyone's watching, they can be entertained? Well, this is more about relaxing than being entertained to oh, a certain degree. Oh, and I, I feel like an interesting conversation is nice, but I don't feel like, like, it's, like it's, it's like a forced thing. If anyone in chat would like to talk about like, ask what we're doing or you know anything like that you can uh, otherwise you know just listening to music doing some painting you know it's it's supposed to be kind of a chill relaxed stream more than a frantic exciting dialogue sort of stream okay well then i'll just be quiet because i'm good at that <laughs> I am, I think, once I get these all sort of patched up the way I want them, I think I'll be good on these spheres. I think they're at least show ready. What do you think? Here they look pretty nice. Well, that's where everyone's gonna be seeing them from. Right? We'll find out what they do. So, and, and I have no idea why these are probably gonna kill us in a big fight, but we have three orbs, orb pillar things that. I'm going to set aside to finish drying and call good. Um, anything you want me to work on over there? Mm -hmm. You can work on the sarcophagus thing. Otherwise, I'm going to clean up some cuffs. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Quickly. Yeah, I'm just going to keep moving along on this. Welcome back. You want me to work on the crypt, you said? Yeah, the crypt thing. All right. So, so I can get a little. We have a little head. sarcophagus with a knight embossed on the top. 
We did a Metal Knight last time. What I'm sort of thinking, I want to experiment since these are prototypes, right? Yeah, give it a try. I'm thinking the lid. I'm going to make the lid with the carving of the knight on top and the body of the sarcophagus, two different colors. So the lid is one color, mm -hmm. and then the sarcophagus body is a different color. Okay, um, is the knight going to be the same color as the lid? Yeah, because it's car. It's a carved, it's carved stone. Into the it's a it's a single piece of stone with a knight carved into it. It's okay. the idea. Just to try something different. You know, try out all sorts of stuff. Um Do you think what are they like a brown stone? Are they a dark are they a gray stone? Well the floor is gray. The floor is currently it's the sort of dark blue, which will actually be quite black once we wash mm -hmm. it. So if um if that were made like out of sandstone. Sort of a sandstone, like maybe... Like buff on the top, <clears throat> and maybe... Oh, a flat earth, and then dark sand, maybe? Um, These two? Yeah, that would work. Alright, darker on top, or darker on the bottom? Um, darker on the bottom. Well, yeah? I, yeah, I think so. Alright. In that case... I think the lid is going to take a little more work because it has all of these little... It's hard to see because it's uh, all black primed right now. But it has this whole night on the top. So I'm going to actually start with the dark sand in order to create the, uh, the top. I'm going to use my medium brush just so I can get the, really get the paint into these cracks and crevices that surround this night carving. There are a lot of cracks and crevices. Which is nice, it catches the wash well so that the detail shows later. But right now I'm getting my prime coat on, my base coat, effectively. And I really just want to get it into every little spot. You don't want a little spot of black primer showing through, necessarily. No, especially when it's a lighter color like that. Yeah, it can, it can really... Uh, be distracting to have a black speck of primer popping out of like a sandstone carving or something like that. So I'm just gonna kind of take my time and work my way around. Get in in between. Oh, well, like cat hair, because we have cats, so er, we have cat hair everywhere in the house, always. That's just the rule. Up and in there. You can start to see sort of the amount of detail 
on this night figure as I get it painted in. So I'm sort of taking my time getting it all there. Okay, there's a sandstone knight carving, and I want to get the rest of the lid the same color. I'm just going to go around. I don't worry too much about hitting the lower section right now, because that will be painted over. Um with uh, flat earth. And one thing I think I'm gonna do as a finishing nice little piece is um, I want to, I'm going to put a little bronze edge around the lid. Yeah, is there kind of a demarcation? Well, it's a demarcation, there's a little flare. Mm. And I might, I might trace a tiny bit of bronze along the blade of the sword, I don't know. Just sort of thinking ways to make it look a little extra special. You know, I could see people putting some metallic features on their sandstone script. script. I'm at that point where I'm almost out of paint, but I'm also almost done, and I really don't want to have to get more paint out, so I'm like scraping. Gonna hit along the bottom edge here. It'll be a little messy, but that's a okay. All right. So there's a little bit of the lid painted in, in this dark sand. It's called. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good color for it. I can also see it's done in sort of like a marble. Yeah. Kind of the ivory. Mm hmm Things like, like you did once before on a crypt with uh, yeah, maybe. black lines. Maybe. That might get a little too busy. Mm -hmm. I'm not in love with the black lines on the crypt, personally. But... Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it was an experiment. Alright, so I'm giving this a minute to dry because I need to be able to handle the top of the lid while I paint the bottom portion of this script. So, how are your walls coming? It looks like you have only five more tiles left. Yeah, including the inside corner. Yeah, which is a pretty easy one. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that's nice. I'm just giving myself a break. Okay. A yeah. drying break. It's important to give yourself a break every now and then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can dry yes. out that way. If you're just getting out of the tub? Or something, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that'll need a second coat. Maybe. It'll get pretty covered, but it wouldn't hurt to have a second coat. Yeah. Do you want me to put it on? Mm-hmm. Can I have some of the flat mm -hmm. red? Just reach over. Mm. 
stuck that in a little too far. Um, we'll be something to clean up later. Sometimes reaching into the pot, it's hard to judge the depth from a distance. Yeah, if you're not looking straight down at it, yep. So this that I'm painting here is going to just... Honestly, it's, it's mostly for if there's any spot where the blood shows through. You won't see black primer or anything like that. You'll see some more red. So a lot of this is not going to be directly visible in the uh, blood pool. Yep, <clears throat> we saw that with the uh, ooze pit. With the ooze pit that it pretty much gets totally covered. But it does provide a base color. In case, and it, you know, in case it shows through a little, mm -hmm. it's not bad to have. And I'll need to scarl it up where the plastic is. The fill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll do that when we do the touch up with the. So that almost looks orange on this camera, actually, because of how much it's gleaming. Because it's wet. Oh. But I think that'll provide a nice base coat. I'm going to grab the ooze pit. Mm hmm. Or side by side. So here's our ooze pit. Mm. As you can see, it has this, it's, it's resin, so it's nice and hard. So you can see it has this sort of glossy look to it with a nice melange of greens all oozed together. So that's sort of where it is and where it's going, you know, side by side. Kind of nice to see, I think. Mm-hmm. You just have to imagine it being red. red. How is my... It still looks tacky. So, I don't want to grab it quite yet. All right. You're getting along on that. Yeah. And then, well, do we need to do any cleanup? I don't know. I mean, you need scarlet red on there. Yeah. I so think... if you wanted to get it out, you could go through all of those. Which one did you start with? Up here. And you went that around? Around, yeah. All right. <clears throat> so you could do scarlet red, touch up if it needs any. Well, before I pour it out, I'll start going through each one. Yeah, there is some touch-up from my initial quick base coat painting. Yep, and then, I don't know, there might be yeah. some of that really dark blue touch-up as well. Hard to say. The field blue. The field blue, but you'll see it. Grab a little spot of red. So... My big touch-up areas are going to be right along where the floor is, in the wall. Um, I painted the walls first and then the floor, so there's a little... Sometimes the field blue gets up onto the wall when you're going quick. And you just want to help define that edge. Like so. And then just look around for spots. Reach over, knock things down. Yeah. There's definitely a fair amount of cleanup where the floor came in contact with the wall. Just because of how much paint was going around at the moment. 
And there's a couple spots here where it's a little not perfectly coded. Just gonna throw a spot here and there. That will be good. Pretty much each one of these pieces has a spot or two along the, the floor. Get it painted all the way down. Oh, get that. Oh uh, yeah, that was a spot. Just getting all this little touch up taken care of, so that when I go to wash everything, the uh, underneath doesn't have any glaringly. Problematic. And this set will transform pretty wildly once I uh, get the uh, wash on it. It's very bright and flat right now, and it'll become dark and <laughs> yeah, and dirty, dirty and necromancy. -y. Yeah, I guess necromancers just aren't the best ghost keepers, are they? Well, they have skeletons for that. And skeletons aren't very good at mopping. Hmm. It's just, they don't have the amount of muscle you need to really move a mop around. No, no. You can't expect them to. Like, empty the bucket all the time, either. And a zombie is horrible at cleaning because it keeps leaving body parts and stuff everywhere it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just makes more of a mess. It, yeah, it's, it's not good. <laughs> Basically, when you're dealing corpses, it's going to be a little messy. Yeah, I guess that explains the typical state of a necromancy layer. Not to mention just the dirt from all that grave digging, you know? Oh yeah, they carry it home with them, don't they? Yeah, it gets tracked in on the shoes. Even if you're not constantly sweeping up, then who's going to do that, right? The skeletons? I don't think so. Basically, if you're a germophile phobe, not germophile. Germophobe, don't germophobe. become a necromancer. Don't become a necromancer, mm -hmm. it's not the school for you. Go into transmutation so you can cast press the digitation on everything. Yeah? Mm hmm. Which is the cantrip that one of the things it does is let you clean like everything in a five foot area magically. Just like remove all the dirt and stuff. Yeah. Those are handy to have around. Then I'm going to need to do the floors. There's not as many spots on the floor as there are along the walls because the floors were painted second. But I saw a couple spots here and there that needed um, touching up. I'm 
but all of the walls had a little bit of touching up. can get that last one too. Yep. And then I'll backtrack to the one you're doing. And I'll backtrack to this one in my hand. Alright. I think in general the different color floor and wall well, a little more work looks a lot better. Oh, than the other one? Than when it's all monotone. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I feel like it just adds a bit to the overall, like, fanciness of it. When you have a separate color from the floor and the ceiling. Yeah, the first one we did was just one color. We yeah. Probably do that little bit too. Yep. And then this one will be done. And then I'll do that last one. My main task is to cover up these white spotches of the fill. But then I'm also going to go around and define the edge a little better. The outer edge. The inner edge doesn't matter too much because it's getting filled with a resin. Uh, a pourable resin. So... I'm not too concerned about that, but what I want to get is the outer edge of the pool here. Thanks. I'll do that one quick so that we don't lose track. touch up which needs quite a bit um, of touch up right around the rim here so this will be a minute
Okay. Almost done with the edge. I got one last quarter. So. Which is fine, because that lets all that give it a chance to dry. Mm -hmm. You don't want to wash with wet paint mm -hmm. on that, because that will run. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of paint on the rim of this bottle. I'm going to clean it. Yes, hopefully scrape away in the opening of the bottle. Hoping not to get too much dried paint into, into the, it. Uh, yeah. Alright, there. I just redefined the edge on the outside of the pool here. It's fairly subtle, but it needed to be done. So... Our next step here will be uh, some field glue to clean up the floors of this necromancer crypt. So I'm going to grab one at a time and just make sure, see if they even need any cleaning, because I only saw one or two that had sort of problem areas. Uh, I'm just looking for areas with splotch of paint on it, or an incomplete area. That's my main goal. Any area that'll be problematic for washing. That one is... There was a, there was a little paint in there, but it was actually a flake of dry paint. <laughs> um, but right here... It's not fully covered, so just plop a little tiny bit of field blue in there. Again, this spot just needs a little more coverage. Nothing too hard. Just some quality control. Oh, you're pulling them off for me, thank you. Mm -hmm. start with the rounded bit. Yeah. Alright. These all look good. And now that one. To check this floor. Yep, so I'm gonna move this. Now you can start to see the status of it. I think it's time to do something fun. Do you wanna make a blood pool? Yeah, is that dry? It's dry enough. Okay. For getting wet paint and resin poured into it. Let's see what happens with Only... color. You're going to use the uh, scarlet red. I have some toothpicks here that I'll use part of. Some mm -hmm. of them was used for other stuff. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of black wash. The scarlet red, which is next to me. I'm actually going to put a tiny bit of ivory in to lighten certain areas. Hmm, okay. Once it gets mixed in. Make it look pussy. Pussy. Um, See how that works? And maybe a little bit of the flat red? I don't know. Probably not. Well, you can have it there. In case. In case, yeah. I feel the... And then I'll need my realistic water on hand, which is just this is for train sets, actually, but it's a uh, sort of self-leveling uh, water effect resin. So I'm going to take my main color here mm -hmm. and get a good amount, sort of 
This is what I want the body of the liquid to look like, so I'm not going to skimp on it, right? Yeah, it's going to wash it all, all around pretty well. Yeah. These are going to be sort of darker clots. So I'm thinking three, maybe three. Yeah, three's good. And then I'm only going to do like two splotches of ivory. Like a little on there, a little on there. And then pour the clear in and see how they spread. Well, I'll probably spread them a bit myself. So. We've been pleasantly surprised about how well this works. The first time we tried it, it was really kind of a disaster. Yeah. Um, we had used river tiles and we had uh, <clears throat> taped the edge ends to keep it from running off the edges of the river tiles. And it seeped through anyway, and then it didn't harden. And it took over a week. Wow. It took over a week for it to harden. It was, uh, we didn't think it would ever harden. The black swirly looks good in that. You can sort of, it will disperse naturally a little bit, but you know, sort of disperse it. Yeah. Throughout. I'm thinking that looks pretty nice. No, I mean, not nice, really nice. It sounds like niceness, but. I think it needs another little black splotch over on the left side here. Yeah. Yeah, the black really highlights the colors nicely. Yeah. Also gonna wipe it off my arm before it hardens. So what we did with ended up doing with the green one Get rid of that bubble. Is that uh you got an impenetrable bubble there. Do you need like a pin? Maybe. <clears throat> it does not want to pop. There's not a humongous rush to get this mixed. This takes quite some time to dry. But... Sometimes the, uh... That might have to be repainted a little. The toothpick bounces and kicks it out. And that area didn't quite get covered, so I'm just pushing it over into... Well, it doesn't hurt to have a bubble in it. Maybe you could put the bubble over in the middle. Will it move? Oh, that's gone. The pin did its job. Mm -hmm. Got a lancet, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm just mixing in some of the spots where the, um, blood, the red was. Um, that the paint had been dispersing, it was clumped up a little. There. I think that's good. That looks good. So, that looks like a nice swirly pool of blood. Move it out of the glare mm -hmm. of the light. You know, <clears throat> it'll be a little more matte when it dries, and then we'll decide whether to put another clear layer over it to make it glossy or not. Yeah, so you have two options. Um, if you want it ooze, like that ooze we wanted really glossy, so once this dries, you can actually put a another clear coat of that, wa of that water on top of it in order to give it a gloss finish. Um, I'm thinking because it's blood, it might be better to let it matte a little. A little bit, yeah. <clears throat> um, we'll see. Mm -hmm. I sh the one thing I should have done is washed this before I did that, but yeah, but you're not. I can work that. around that yeah. easily. So I'm gonna slide this to the side. I think that's dry enough to wash, don't you? Yeah, I'll uh, 
You got gloves on? Do you, I'll wash it because I'm wearing a glove if you want to work on the sarcophagus. Would you like me to do the brown on the bottom? Yeah, do the flat earth on the bottom. Okay, I can do that. I'll I'm be painting pretty the pleased with this. bottom with... Yeah. I think adding more black was the key. Once I saw it, um, it needed some extra black. I actually put two or three extra drops in there while you were grabbing that pen. Oh, yeah. And The black really helps. Yeah. Makes it a lot darker. Than... I'm not sure the ivory did much of anything, but no, that's it fine. Didn't hold together that well. No. So I'm gonna move all the pieces over next to me. I'll watch you move them. Get them out of the way of you, and also. Okay. So yeah, I'm just uh, using a large brush. And painting along the bottom of this sarcophagus here. The washing goes usually pretty quickly, so that's that'll be good. Yeah, and then we'll have a mostly finished piece of. Uh, yeah, we just need to do the doors. Prototyping. Forgot about that. I have to do the frames on the doors. Yep. The metal bars on the doors will need to be done, but that's about it. But it's about 4.30 now, and I'd like to finish on a nice-looking, like, washed note. You know? Mm-hmm. Giving this a little shake. Sometimes it sediments to the bottom. You want to make sure your wash doesn't get all... All the pigment gets all gritty on the bottom if you don't mix it up properly. It will do that. We saw that happen. And this bottle is sort of nearing the end of its life, so it has a tendency to do that more as it gets lower. So. I'm going to start with the largest pieces, the corners, and work my way back. No, it's stick. Maybe I'll just use this one. This is stickier. So you can see how much it darkens. There's a side-by-side -side comparison there. And so I'm just going to do this one side and let it dry so you can see the color, see if you like it. Okay. And if not, then we can use a box. If this is too dark, I don't know. I think once it dries, it'll be okay, just from a quick glance. But yeah, I mean, it's good contrast with the top, and that's maybe what we want. And then that contrast will be a little unified once mm -hmm. we uh, yeah, you wash the, it. The umber wash on it. Yeah. Yeah, this shows the umber wash pretty well. Mm, that's true. The the sand is more yellow in it, and the buff. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, right. The contrast really wouldn't be good. So I think this is good. What do you think that wall? Yeah, that looks good. It's not, being dark like that is, is going to work really well for this piece. For this necromancer crypt. Mm hmm <laughs> Who, you hate it when your bottom's all gritty, like the primer? Is that when you fall off your bike on the dirt road? Okay, there is one piece. It will lighten a little as it dries, but it goes to show how much a wash can transform a piece. Um, much more moody. Much moodier. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> Where is your bottom gritty when you're in uh watching the Philadelphia Flyers? Because their mascot's gritty. Yep. These dungeon tiles, the space between the stones is quite large, so you have to be a little conscious of getting it down in between when you're washing. That's what it'll look like. Okay, not bad. I with a bronze lip, and then once it's washed, mm -hmm. I think that would be pretty nice, actually. Don't you? Yeah, it should look pretty good. <clears throat> so, what color are you thinking of door frames? For like the metal. Mm-hmm. Lit for this. Let's do. If we're doing bronze on the uh, crypt, let's do bronze on the door. Okay. Start start on that and see how it will work. Yeah. Working my way through all of these big corners first. They take quite a bit longer because they are quite a bit larger. Looking from a distance, I just saw a spot on the floor that hadn't quite gotten covered. It's a little standout. I got it. No. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so we have... <clears throat> And this brass, bright brass, just the regular brass? Yeah, do the regular brass. Is that one out somewhere? The brass? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right here. Oh, okay. Couldn't grab it with my brush very well. I am. It's the same color. Yeah, that blood pool looks alright. One thing I determined, you can see I tried to do some magma with the orange in that cap, mm -hmm. and the orange is just not the right color for magma. I think we need to go red and yellow. Hmm. No, the it's, orange doesn't work. Here, it's right? like it's like capturing like the middle part of the fire without the low and high end <laughs> temperatures at all. Yeah. You know? Which is just it doesn't really sell it, so Cause I do want to do like a magma pit at some point, cause that is cool. I guess lava if it's in the air. I mean, you could have if it were really. Nah, you're right. Red and yellow. Probably. Red and yellow, maybe some orange, tiny, like tiny spots, bit of, like but, a swirl in it. But just the orange. It looks more honestly. It looks like radioactive waste. Mm -hmm. You know. I don't know what radioactive waste actually looks like, but, but that's how you want I always it. imagine it as that sort of bright orange. 
I think because it's sort of a not normal color to see in nature, especially in liquids, mm -hmm. which is why it, it reads to me as like a nuclear waste killer. You also get like orange, like hazmat suits and stuff like that. So there's stuff around it that, that ties it to that color subconsciously, I think. This is my last of the big corners, which is nice. So I'm just leaving the clips on here. Mm-hmm. To hold and, them. Yeah, and paint up to the clip. And then once and it I dries, can paint it absolutely can... everything. Except where the clip oh, is. Okay. Next, I'm going to do the rounded corners here. Moving in. There we go. Get all of this nice and dark and foreboding. Make it a proper necromancer's lair. And all of this prototyping is going to sort of give us a nice basis for our um, what colors we want to offer when we start selling dungeon tiles. We want to know what colors sort of work well, what the dungeon tiles look like painted certain ways. So that's why we want to try out new and exciting colors here on these pieces that are using the old method of construction. And the old method being multiple pieces. Much more. With more seams. Much more difficult to assemble. And more fragile. And more fragile. And look less good. Look worse. Basically, it's all positives. Which is always nice to have something in there. Everything about the change is better. There's one. And if you want to, you can see a before and after view. <laughs> I'll even be able to get the edges. This will be a nice blood crypt. <laughs> you know, everyone loves a blood crypt. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, who doesn't? This is the kind of stuff I wish I had back when I was running a long D&D campaign, and it was full of blood magic and things like that. All sorts of dark stuff. Um... I really enjoyed that campaign quite a bit. Alright, there are all the corners done. Next I'm gonna tackle the next large piece the largest piece, 
which is the door frame here. Luckily, it doesn't have all that much wall to do, mostly for. There's quite a bit of floor here to cover. Oh, that's the door. Right with there. the dungeon, uh, with this, uh, worn stone tile that we're sort of using here, I like to go through the gaps and get those nicely covered beforehand, before I do the tops. So, pulling back, this is mostly dry. There's still some dark spots, but it gives you a kind of idea of the moody quality, and that shine will disappear more and more as it dries. All right, now I have six walls to do, like this one. It goes along pretty smooth, and I uh, should be on track to finish right around uh, five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these doors might be done. Now, if you're interested in any of our um, D and D stuff or any of our painting stuff, we do do behind the scenes videos and things like that. Um, those are all for our patrons, and you can check out Patreon.com/slash/Dyson Dungeons in order to do it. It's the best mm -hmm. thing way to support all the stuff that we do here. Um, be it the show, the video games, the D&D, &D, everything we do, uh, ooh, the best way to support us is Patreon. There are exclusives for our patrons, behind the scenes videos of our warm ups, things like that. And we run special polls periodically for things for painting, yeah, for example. Like um, what color we should paint something. Feel free to check us out. Um, there if you would like to. Just thought I would get in a little plug. Since, you know. Well, we gotta support the show somehow. Yeah. And what better way than Patreon? Dice and Dungeons. Dice and Dungeons. At pat Patreon dot slash Dice and Dungeons. I think you can also get into our Discord, things like that. So.
Well, there's still a loose thread there. Oh. I got it. Tying up loose ends. That might have actually been part of the float that it was printed on. The raft. Alright. Four to go, plus two pillars, and then just the pool. And then we might get a little look at what the finished product is going to look like. This is pretty good. We're almost finishing an entire set. Yeah. How is your door coming? Um, I got three out of the four sides pretty much done. We might be able to even glue the doors in. I do have to make hinges. Yeah, but this is using the older system, the not new system, because this is all prototype. Which are a lot quicker, but less, uh, a little less well to show, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I think it'd be nice to finish up the set if we can by three. We'll see when I'm done here. I'll, um... Then we can take some pictures of it. Yeah. Mm hmm. Do you want to wash the brass on this? Um, probably. But, you know, if we're... We can always just prop the doors in there for the photos until, yeah, yeah, we'll until they're there, finished. Until they're dry. Because we don't have the sarcophagus done yet. No, but we're very close to done with this dungeon set. I only have five more pieces to wash. Plus the pool. A blood pool looking yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it's a little lighter, but you know, it looks bloody. And it's necromancer, so it's probably not like it's probably magically kept less clotted than a uh, normal mm -hmm. blood pool. Yeah. No, well, yeah, if it's clotted, it's no good. Here's our, our blood pool, still drying, it'll take a while. But I will have to get to that soon with the wash around the edges. Um, yeah, no, it's looking, I'm pretty happy with it. So, these are all dungeon tiles that we're designing. Um, this is sort of a set we're looking to design and sell. Um, put all to the pieces together, and this is a necromancer crypt. For anyone who is joining us at the end here. Um, 
we have printed it all ourselves on the printers that are actively running behind me. And we are going to... We've been painting them up from... Basically, we started with a spool and we're ending with uh, this finished thing. And they're all magnetized, so they click together very nicely, which is nice. And once I finish this section of wall, I'll give it a little example. So these are... They hold together like that. Very, they're very fun to play with. And we use them also for our D&D &D show. We do Sundays at 2 p.m. Eastern on this channel. Um, all of the backlog is on our on YouTube and podcast at DysonDungeons.com. Um, I think I have a ton of fun with it. I think it's really good. My wife is the DM, and I'm not just saying that because my wife's the DM. No, I play have too a lot of fun with it. It really is a lot of fun. It's a really excellent campaign going on. And we've only, let's see, had a total party kill just once, but it was a simulation, so. Mm hmm. It was just the appearance of total party kill. Although, but, uh, the... I did get him close to dying in a recent episode that has not aired yet. Yeah, that was uh, pretty scary, actually. Yeah. I don't want to give too many spoilers, but it's it was a lot closer than I was comfortable with. It came at a very critical time. I was starting to think about what, what character I was going to play next. <laughs> it was the sort of uh, moment. Because if the thing had attacked me another time, I definitely would be dead. But you guys killed it first, luckily. Yeah, well, there wasn't any reason for it to attack you at all, because you weren't attacking it. I think it was a mindless thing that was just attacking randomly. Mm -hmm. Then you just happened to be uh, the random target. target. Okay. Well, I'm going to get some paper clips and see if I can come close to making hinges. The wire on these paper clips turns out to be just the right diameter to fit through the holes in the door. I'm getting so close. I'm getting to the end. We're almost at five. When we end, I only got a little bit left. I'm very excited. Always good to be finishing. It's good to know how long these things take to do, too. Yes, it is. Especially if we start selling them painted and everything like that. You know, you want to know how too. much you're... you're gonna, that's right. If you're watching this and you see how long it takes, you can tell how much you'll be paying. Yeah. Uh, if I'm getting minimum wage or not. Right? Yeah. Existing minimum wage, Michigan minimum wage. <laughs> Probably Michigan minimum wage. Mm. Well, that's a lot higher than I think federal minimum wage is like seven and a quarter or something. Yeah, seven twenty five, which is pretty criminal. Yeah. Okay. 
Now I want to be careful washing, uh, washing this out. Want to get get it on the outside of the pool. Get it into the liquid, but I want to get the top of the pool darkened. I also don't want to mess up my brush by getting resin in it. So I'm trying to be quite careful as I get all of this outside wash. So once these are straight, the next task is to try to get them through the holes in the door. And sometimes they go right through, but sometimes the, uh, the holes are long. Well, that one went through. That's good. For now, I'm just going to leave it on there. Actually, and then uh, use it to hold it while I paint where the clip was. That one went All right. smoothly. Blood pool is washed. I need tiny little bits of this color. So, touch up the last little bits. Of and what I'm going to do to wrap up here is quickly clean my brush off, always. Um, and then I'm going to, using my glove, because it's still a little wet, assemble my finish... Well, our finish necromancer crit, yes? Mm hmm So there's still a lot of liquidy parts. And parts that are drying, so I need to be a little careful. But I well, should probably push these in from the top. Let's do that. Pull it off. Down, down. There. Inside corner. There. And there. Extra segment of the wall. I'd say that looks pretty foreboding. Yep. You could, do, you could set this door scene if you wanted. Is this dry? Uh, yes. So this needs some finishing work, but we, uh, it'll be dark and broody as well. This is dry Sarcophagus too. there. We're going to have a lintel up above the door frame. And? And? Those are the doors. Yeah. So those get set in and they work on a hinge. This will need a little time to dry. Something like, that. Something like this. But I think this is looking. They open in or out. They open in. Don't they? I like how sort of gem red the blood is. In the pool. You know, it really makes it stand out. Yeah. It, I was a little concerned that with the red walls. It was going to be too much. It would just like be the walls, but it's not. I think with the it's... floor. It's a real different. It really set. like pops. Mm -hmm. I I like this set, this necromancer set here. Yeah, the other one was really nice. The the, the ooze the one. Pool, yeah. But this one. This one with the, this one feels is creepy. Really, yeah, you know, with the red walls and all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, gross blood exactly. Um, all right. So this is where I'm things. gonna leave it. We're at five o'clock. Um, thank you so much, everyone who joined us. Um, we'll be working on something else. I have another necromancer set at two magic shops all primed and sitting there ready to go. 
Do another magic shop? Maybe we'll do a magic shop with purple walls. Um, we did a poll, didn't we? I think purple walls came in second, but I can run another poll. Maybe this weekend for everyone to decide what we paint on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And that's for our Patreon uh, subscribers. They get special right. polls. If and you're not a Patreon subscriber, well, you have no say at <laughs> all in how that works. So, thank you everyone for showing up. Thank you for watching. We'll see how this all turns out in the end, but I'm really enjoying it. Uh, yeah. And the next thing that you'll be able to see on our channel here is our main show on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern. Check it out. All right. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye.